place. Um, we're here at the, at the month where everybody celebrates the Lord Jesus Christ and His birth. But there's more to the story than Jesus being born as Savior of the world. There's a lot took place. A lot took place to make it happen. And I'm going to start this morning. I titled the message, The Visit, in the book of Luke, chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. And we'll read 26 through 38, and then I'll bring you the word this morning. So if you will, stand with me as we read God's word. Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. And if everybody's there, say amen. Amen. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And when he and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And listen to what Mary said. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And I say amen to that. And listen how Mary closed this meeting with Gabriel. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your true and living word. And I pray this morning, Lord Jesus, we understand how important it is to be prepared when we're visited from the Holy Ghost. And I thank you, Lord God, that Mary was found favorable to bring forth this son who we call the Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God is with us. We love you this today, Lord. We praise your holy name. Now anoint me, Father, with the Pentecostal Holy Ghost fire from heaven to bring the truth that is your word. And all God's children said, Amen. you may be seated. Now, I want you all to understand what's taking place here. It's been over 400 years since that anybody has heard from God. 400 years in this story. And all of a sudden, a little 14-year-old girl, roughly was her age, they say, was minding her own business getting ready, Daniel, to be married to Joseph. And she gets a visit from the angel Gabriel. And he tells her, Sister Kim, be of good cheer. The Lord has found favor with you, and you're going to bore a son, and they're going to, he's going to be the Savior. Now, I understand Mary. Mary's like, but what? <laughs> First of all, um, I'm engaged, and I have not been with him, so how can I conceive a child? And the 
Gabriel explains to her, you're going to be overtaken, you're going to be overshadowed, and you're going to be impregnated by the Holy Ghost. Now I want to talk about Mary. First of all, why did God choose her? He chose her because he knew Mary would, would accept his calling. You see, being a Christian in today's time especially is more than coming to church and hearing some good singing and visiting and family and, 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 and hanging out and, and then going home. Being a Christian is being ready no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, no matter what's going on in your life, and being, and here's the key, being not just ready, but available. Because in today's time, Corey, I'm telling you, it's getting, uh, the, the church is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and God is just a three-letter word. It's been 400 years since God had even spoke to the children of Israel. And he comes into Mary and he tells her, you're up. You're up. What about you this morning? What if you were sitting at home and you were minding your own business, Brother Mike, and out of nowhere God shows up and says, Mike, I got a job for you to do. Are we ready, number one? Number two, are we clean? Because the Bible teaches me, Stevie, we're to be, uh, to be close and to be clean. And ready. But think about Mary, what just, what, what, Mad Max, she's, she knows that if she starts showing that, it's an instant death. Any woman that was engaged to be married found herself pregnant outside of him. They put her in front of the town and everybody threw a stone and she was stoned to death. The, the, Mary, did you see any worry of that in this conversation? You know why? Mary knew God. That's why Mary knew God. You know, it's one thing. I, I've, I've read many articles about this, this passage, about how um, people don't believe in the virgin birth. Listen, next time you tell somebody this story and they say that's a bunch of hogwash, there's no way uh, that, that that happened. Uh, you need to teach them about the birds and the bees. And for the record, are we not artificially inseminating today? God just beat them to the punch. Amen? It was going on a long time ago. It ain't, it ain't nothing new. I mean, Elizabeth, who was barren, is pregnant, been six months pregnant. All I'm saying is, you never know when God's going to come up on you. But when he does, you need to be ready. Now, you ain't going to get it on social media. You ain't going to get it on the television. You ain't going to get it on the radio. I tell you what, that's, those are the, the, you need to stay as far away from them places as you can. Um, we were talking about social media this, this morning at Sunday school. It's ruined society. You want to know somebody's business, just hop on Facebook. Or I call it two Facebook. Uh, get on, uh, I don't even know what the others are called. Um, what is it, Instagram? Yeah. Twitter. Twitter. Twitter's a good one. Golly, what happened to the 80s, amen? <laughs> we were talking about that. We didn't have none of that in the 80s. We had what we're doing right now. It's called communication. 
And if you said something about somebody, they were going to come ask you what you said. Amen? Wasn't done with the finger unless it was sign language. Amen? But I want y'all to understand something about this young girl right here. She was roughly 14 years old. Hannah, that's younger than you are. And she knew God, and she knew what to do. She didn't say, wait a minute, Gabe. Um, I'm engaged. I don't, uh-uh, this ain't for me. First of all, you fixing to get me killed. Now I'm going to have to go on the run. Because if they see me, I'm done. It wasn't none of that. Now, now what did Mary say? Whatever it be fit for you is fit for me. Amen. Can you say that today as a child of God in this world and this society? Lord, whatever, whatever you say, half the time we don't even hear what he's saying. Right. Because we're too busy, B-U-S-Y, being under Satan's joke. He's got us strapped down. He's got us busy. He's got us doing everything but what God wants us to be doing. And whose fault is that? It's ours. That's our fault. Now, I know some might call me a prune and uh, everything. I, I'm scared to death of... Um, what we're handing off to our grandchildren, Sister Kim. Amen. The world we're giving them. What we're leaving them. Which, by the way, should be our legacy. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. It's not It's not popular to talk about God anymore. I don't care. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. You better start talking about him. Because he's coming after the ones that knows him. Amen. And I do believe this. And Susan, I believe it. I, I, I'll carry it to my grave. And if I die, it don't matter anyway. Can I get an amen? amen. We're going to see the rapture. Amen. I believe our generation is going to see the rapture. Amen. There's nothing else prophecy-wise, Brother Randy, that's supposed to be fulfilled. It's already been done. And if you look around, the Bible says, Jesus said when his disciples said, Lord, Lord, when will we know when the end times is near? And Jesus said, number one, there'll be rumors of wars. Is that not happening? There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. That means in strange places or places not normal. That's going on. Father will turn on son, and son on father, and daughter on mother, and mother on daughter. That's going on. In other words, we're here. But the problem is, is the pulpits has got a bunch of rubber backbones to them, and they're scared to preach the truth to y'all. Brother Keith, that check they're getting from the church is more important than them preaching the truth. They want you to feel good about your sin. Well, let me tell you something about that. Ain't nothing cool about hell, youth. Adults, if you want a pastor, because this is what's happening, I, I know this. Do you know that since pre-COVID, that church attendance was, before COVID, was only roughly around 57%. After COVID, Sir Thomas, we are now down to 31. 31% church attendance on Sundays. God forbid you throw Wednesday in there. What's happening? What happened, Daniel? Everybody went home, got comfortable in home, and now don't want to come out of home. Not even to work. Amen. Thank God we are so they don't have to. Amen? Amen. Amen. But my point is, 
What are they going to do when the trumpet sounds? Now, I got another funny story for y'all. You know that's how uh, Corey got led to Christ was over a toilet. Amen? You remember, I told y'all the story. Let me tell y'all what happened to me Friday night. I'm laying in bed, like Mary, minding my own business, asleep. And there's the trumpet. I come up out of that bed, and I'm like, I'm waiting, I'm like, I'm waiting, and I'm thinking, I should have done been flying by now. <laughs> Amen? I know that the dead in Christ are going to rise, but that's supposed to be pretty quick. I'm next. Amen? Nothing's happening. So I'm like, well, okay. It's getting louder. So I'm walking around the house, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it, and I'm thinking, where is that coming from? And we got a little dog waterer that sits right beside the uh, water dispenser there in the, in the dining room. Well, apparently it was out of water. But Sister Kim, I ain't never heard a horn that loud in my life. I'm telling you, I come up out of the bed, I thought it was, and you know what my first thought was? Where's Jenny? Where's Jenny? That's the first thing that come to my mind. Where's my wife? Is she going? That's exactly the way it's going to be, beloved, when that trumpet sounds. It's over. There's no wait a minute, uh, Stevie. Don't wait a minute, God. I'll get it right now. That's It's over. Time stops there. And for the record, Eve brought sin into the world. Mary took sin out of the world. Amen. But she was ready. And she didn't have no arguments other than she had one question. How can it be that I can be with child when I've never been with a man? Doesn't this story intrigue y'all to want to wanna know how did Mary know so much, have so little, but give everything? I'll tell you why. Because she was a soldier of the cross and didn't even know it. But I got one question for you this morning before we turn out of God's house. Are you ready? I don't want to hear, Pastor, I've been in the church my entire life. I've, I've given to the church more than anybody said. I, hey, listen, my, my aunt, my uncle, my grandpa, they started. I don't care. I'm not interested in what somebody else has done or how much you've given or how much time you have, have given to the church. What I'm interested in is did the Holy Ghost call you to the repentance that day? Because if you just come up and said a bunch of words and you wasn't influenced or led by the Holy Ghost, when that trumpet sounds or what I thought I heard Friday night and it's over, so is life for you. Because the Paul said that, I, listen, that the, the, the dead in Christ is going to rise first and then the saints of God is joined with them. And guess who else is? The Holy Ghost. Chapter 4, Revelation, read it. We're all up there, including the Holy Ghost, at the feet of Jesus, worshiping Him. That means there's no more God left down here after the rapture. There's no more feeling of His presence in the world. But let me tell you what is. The devil. The Antichrist. And let me tell you what else is. That Euphrates River. Because when it opens, all the ones that fell with Lucifer are loosed to, to walk the face of the earth. The Bible says there'll be evil on the face of the earth like never before, not even since the beginning of time. But are you ready? Or let, you know, I've said this and I'll say it again. 
There is a good possibility, Sister Mary, that somebody in this sanctuary this morning, this is the last time we'll see him. Brother Keith, the, the, when, when your ticket's pulled, brother, it's pulled. Yes, sir. I'm not, I listen, you, you, you might feel like, well, he's just trying to scare No, I'm not trying to scare you. This isn't one of those fire insur- insurance messages. This is the truth. And and what if Mary hadn't have been ready? What if she'd have said no? She could have. God's not going to go against your will. She could have said, "Now, nah, Gabe, I believe I'm going to pass. I'm happy with Joseph. I don't need no marital problems when I ain't even married yet. Go find somebody else. But she didn't, did she? You know why? Because she was ready. There's two ways God will call you. Either he's going to call you for a mission or he's going to call you home. But where your home is depends on where your heart is. Do you know him this morning? Really intimately know Jesus? Or are you sitting in the sanctuary this morning, just like every other Sunday or, or Wednesday, if you come on Wednesdays? It's just another service. I can't wait till it's over. I've already planned my day out. I can't wait till I get out. I can't believe it's 14 after 12 and he hasn't closed the service yet. We don't have a clock in here. I shut it down when God tells me to. And I know there's somebody in this sanctuary this morning that's lost. Because the Spirit's already revealed it to me. Now you have, listen, you're going to have to make a choice today. Now you can choose to go out the door and go home or go whatever you were going after today, after church. And go on with your life if you want. But I'm telling you, God's calling you this morning. And I'm here to tell you, take the call. Because it's a very good possibility and a very good opportunity that you might not get another one. Because Paul said, absent from the body, Chaz, present with the Lord. It's instant. And you're standing in front of the judge, not the carpenter. Whole different. Whole different king. He's not that nice carpenter, you know, He's a judge. The Bible says Sir Thomas's eyes are like fire. He's got a breastplate of gold and, and a robe that's stretched out on the ground and brass shoes. Judgment is what he is. And there he ought to be. Can I get an amen? amen. And he's going he's gonna to say, listen, I, I, I don't see your name. I try I sent pastors to you. I sent preachers to you, your friends. I sent everybody that I could, and you still said no. So to you I say, turn from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you, and guess where you go then? To the eternal flame of torment. Now I want you to be scared, whoever you are. Listen, I want you all to stand with me. It's not your average Christmas message, is it? Let me tell you, Mary was ready. And you know what, Susu? Every second of every day, is Jesus not ready for us when we call on him? Has he ever said, Susu, uh, busy, uh, I'll get to you when I can? No. When you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, not only thou shalt be saved, but he's a he's a he's present, he's your he's he is your help in the day of trouble, the strong arm in the day of trouble. Nehemiah one seven. He says, I'll never leave you nor I'll ever forsake you. Can your friends say that? I've got family that can't tell me that. Now, I don't know who you are. But God does, and he's calling you this morning. 
I want every head bowed and every eye closed, please. December is one of the worst months for suicide. People are stressed, don't have money, especially now, especially the way things are. They've got children that needs gifts because they put more emphasis on a gift than they have the gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore they're in trouble. They don't have a job or they, they, they've tried and they're under stress. Finances ain't there. or Whatever it may be, this is the worst month of the year. Do you think or don't you think the reason for that is because our adversary, the devil, who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, knows that this is the month that God gave us a gift that keeps on giving. He's going to take out as many as he can. But if you're in here this morning, and you ain't where you used to be or where you want to be with the Lord, raise your hand. Amen. Praise God, somebody's honest. What are you in here this morning and you thought you were saved, but now that you know that because the Holy Ghost didn't bring you to the altar or wherever you was, you don't know for sure. You don't know. You just don't know, but you want to know. Raise your hand. I want everybody to look at me a second. The choice is yours. I've done my part. Please, whoever you are, get it right. Get it right or else you might be left. Amen? Amen. Hasn't it been good to be in the house of God this morning? Little Mary, a little virgin, she was ready for the call. And I want us to be the same. God calls on us, Sister Melba, we ought to be ready and willing. Amen. Amen. I mean, he died for us. Amen. This baby that's fixing to be born, uh, to the holiday we're fixing to celebrate, was born to die. So we could be free. He died so we could live. Isn't that awesome? Mm-hmm. And we, we, we ain't done nothing for it. Amen. He did it all. Why? Because he loves you. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, Listen, I kind of like this close-knit group. Um, I ain't had one person uh, fall asleep or not off since we've been doing it. I guess what I'm going to have to do is put some game cameras up in the sanctuary. And I'll check the footage after service and pinpoint who you are because the pews will be set up again. I won't be able to see y'all. No, seriously. It's been a blessing to be this close to do our, uh, have our service every Sunday. Um, I'm going to miss the tight-knit group, but I can't wait till we dedicate that sanctuary to Tommy Chapman and to those that has done what they've done in there. Um, we're not done yet, but we're close. Amen? I want to thank everybody for what you're doing and what you've done. I want to thank um, Shelby for coming this morning with Corey. Daniel, for your music. Uh, the, the zeal you have for God, brother. Everybody in this room ought to be jealous. Amen. I love you. I love all y'all. Guys mean the world to me. Susan, having you here with Aunt Judy, which I haven't seen in so long. Um, Chash, you and Stephen. Y'all come back. You're not visitors anymore. You're family. Um, you might see me preach the sermon where I, my teeth almost come out. I've had, <laughs> I've had to catch them a couple of times. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway. I just wanted y'all to understand Mary and how she was ready and how there was no second guessing. She did it. And thank God she did. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask Daniel, will you close the service, little brother, please?
in Jesus' name.